All right, fifth graders, today we're going to be doing illustrative five, illustrative math, grade five, unit four, lesson 12, an algorithm using partial quotients. Let's make sense of an algorithm using partial quotients. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Well, I notice that there are multiplication expressions on the side of this division problem. And I notice that the 20 times the 16 is probably 320, right? 16 times 2, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So yeah, if I did 200, uh, 16 times 20, I would get 320. So I noticed that, and then I noticed that they subtracted 448 from 320, or 320 from 448, and they were left with 128. And whoever's working this problem is going to try 5, 5 times 16 next. So 16 times 5, 5 times 6 is 30, 80, right? So that would be 80 here, and the 5 would go on top, and then I would subtract, and I would continue on. I noticed that um, they multiplied 16 by 20, and then wrote 20 above. And this is like how I divided when I was in fourth grade. So it's very similar, except now I have two-digit division. Okay. This is an algorithm we use to divide whole numbers. The algorithm is not complete. What would you do next? Well, again, I would do 5 times 16, which we decided was 80. I would subtract that to see what I would need to do next. So 12 minus 8 is 48, right? And then I would try to come up with another multiplication. I would put the 5 up here because I did 5 times 16 is 80, right? 5 times 16 is 80. Subtract that to get to what I need to do next. So the next step would be a multiplication problem, something times um, 16. Okay. So I think what they're trying to do is to get you to see that there are steps. When I do 20 times 16, when I do 20 times 16, I'm going to put the 20 on top for my algorithm. I'm going to multiply times 16 and put the answer here, and then I'm going to subtract, just like we did in fourth grade. And then I'm going to figure out the next number to multiply times 16, put the number here, and then subtract. And keep going until I get close to zero or something less than 16. All right, so find the value of 448 divided by 16. Show your thinking. Organize it so it can be followed by others. And then I'm going to discuss how I found that value with my partner. And then we're going to compare it to Alina's work. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently than Alina. So I think I'm going to use multiplication. And I want to get as close to 400 as possible. So what is 16 times 4? 16. Oops, I need a pencil, don't I? Let's go back. Sorry about that. Or actually, we could use that, right? We could use a blank screen. So let's do 448 divided by 16. So remember in yesterday's lesson, I had to find quotients that would add up to 448. So what if we did, um, let's do 16 times, uh, let's do 4, like I said. 4 times 6 is 24, and 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 64. So if I did, um, let's see, if I did 16 times 40, that would be 640. So 4 is going to be too big, or 40 is going to be too big. So we need to go smaller than that, right? So let's do 16 times 20. 0, 0, 0, 12. 320. So we can start there, right? So we could do 320 divided by 16 
is going to give me 20. So I'm going to need another number. So let's see how much time, 320. So how, how much do I need to get up to 448? So let's do 448 divided or minus 320. I need 128. Well, I know that 16 times 10 is 160, so that's too big. So something, I need 128. Let's do, um, let's see, how could, how could we close? Let's do 16 times 8. That's 48. Oh, there it is. 16, uh, 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. So I could do so we'll do 8 here. 16. And what did we divide? 128. So when I add these two up, I get 448. So when I add these two up, I'm going to get the answer of 28. If I were doing that in a standard algorithm, remember 16 goes here and 448 goes there, I could do this first one by saying 20 times 16 is 320. And then I have 128 left. And we guessed that it would be 8. 8 times 16 is 128 with 0 left over. And so my answer would be 28 because I'm going to add those two together. This is a much neater way. I don't have to go over here and do all this work. And sometimes when I do all that work, I get lost, right? All right, so we're going to go back to the page with the questions. All right, and we're going to organize our work so that it can be followed by others. So I'm going to do, again, I'm going to do 448 divided by 16. Remember, we started with 20. 20 times 16 was, uh, what was that? 320. And we were left with 128, and we found out that 8 times 16 was 128. So we're left with 0. We add the 20 and the 8 together, and we get 28. All right, this is Alina's work. Describe the steps Alina took to find the value of 448 divided by 16. So again, she started with 20, and she got the same answer I did, didn't she? She said 20 times 16 is 320, and she even wrote the multiplication out to the side. And then she was also left with 128. But then she decided to do 5 times 16 is 80. And she subtracted, and she was left with 48. So then she decided to do 3 times 16 is 48. And then when she added all of those things up, she got 28, just like I did, just like I did. Okay, so let's see what they ask us now. Share your description of how Alina found 448 divided by 16 with your partner. Take turns being the speaker and the listener. If you're the speaker, share your ideas in writing so far. If you're the listener, ask questions and give feedback to help your partner improve their work. Revise your initial draft based on feedback you got from your partners. How is Alina's strategy the same and different from your strategy? And we already went over that, didn't we? How does the method Alina used help her organize her work? I liked how she wrote those multiplication expressions on the side, so I knew exactly where those, those um, sums or, or I should say uh, answers came from. All right, now we have three different problems. One, two, and three. We're going to use Alina's strategy to complete all three problems. Okay, so Alina started with 20 times 12 is 240, and then she did it again. 20 times 12 is 240, and so we're going to have to subtract to find out how much further we need to go. Oh, we just need a 1, don't we? So we could say 1 times 12, and put that 1 up here, and 1 times 12 is 12, so we're left with 0. And then to find the answer to that, I would do 20 plus 20 is 40 plus 1 is 41. 
All right, we're going to leave that up there, but I'm going to erase this part. I think you know what we did, right? I could, I, I need room for, well, I could write that over there. So let's just put 12 here. Okay. All right, then she started this problem, but she didn't finish it. So she's going to say 40 times 15. Well, I know that 15 times 4 is 20, it's 60, right? So 40 times 15 is going to be 600. Ooh, that's nice. We don't have much left to do, right? 0 from 0 is 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. So I just need to get to 30. And I know because we worked in a previous lesson that 15 times 2, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 2 15s is 30. So I can put that 2 up here. 2 times 15 is 30, and I have 0 left over. And I can also write it here if I want to follow in what Alina does. And then I'm going to add the 40 and the 2 and get an answer of 42. And notice that she boxed and also I boxed my answer so that um, it's easily found by me and by my teacher. Also, it means that I added these all together. Okay, so I'm going to move this problem over here and write it here. This one, she didn't do any steps for me. So I think I'm going to start with 2. Let's start with 20. So 14 times 2, so let's, that means we're going to do 20, right? 20 times 14. And I know that that's 28, so that's going to be 280. 4 minus 0 is 4. I'm going to have to borrow 1 from the 3 and make that a 16. So I'm left with 84. 84. Well, I think, let's see, what could I do next? I could do 14 times, if 14 times 2 is 28, and I'm trying to get to 4, for, to 80, let's do 14, let's double it, let's double it, or let's triple it, let's do 6, 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2, oh, we did it, right, so I can put a 6 up here, I could say 14, oops, sorry, Get rid of that. There we go. 6 times 14 is 84, and we're left with 0. And then I can add the 20 plus the 6 and get 26. Nice work. Nice work. All right, let's move on to our synthesis. How did you complete the steps to find 492 divided by 12? Well, I just had one more step to do. She had done most of the work, right? So all I had to do, let's go back to that one. All I had to do was to find one more 12 because when I subtracted, I subtracted, I got 12. And so I knew that I only had to do one more. Okay. How did you find the value of 364 divided by 12? I'm sorry, 14? 364. Oh, that one was the last one we did, right? And we worked that one together. So I started with 14 into 364, and I started with 20, and then I guessed that I would have to do 6 times 14. All right, do you have any questions about your classmates' work? So you can ask those questions to your teacher or to your classmates. Okay. In the last activity, we did 364 divided by 14. What was the first multiple of 14 you subtracted from 364, and how did you choose that multiple? We chose 20, right? We did 14, goes into 364, and we chose 20 because we wanted to get to, we knew that that would get us close to 300, right? Because we knew 14 times 2 was 28. Why are multiples of 10 a good choice of using uh, for algorithms, because they're easy to do, aren't they, right? So 10 times 14 is 140, and then we could do 20 times 14. Those are multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30. That would help us get there. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, we have a cool down. Han started finding the value of a quotient. 
Write the division expression that represents the quotient that Han is finding. Okay, well, the quotient is 500 and, I'm sorry, 5,400 divided by 15. There's my division expression. Remember, expression does not have an answer. And then they want us to complete the algorithm. All right, so what times 15 will give me close to 90, 900? Let's do, let's do 40, 40 times 15. All right, so I remember that 15 times 4, I think that that was 60. Yes, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 60. So this will be 600, and that gives me only 300 left. Oh, i got to remember to write the 40 up here, right? 40, there we go. And now I know that 15 times 2 is 30, so I know that I'm going to need a 20 up here. So I'm going to do 20 times 15 is 300, and 300 minus 300 is 0. So now all I have to do is add these three up. 2 plus 4 is 60, or 20 plus 40, I should say. And then we have to add 300 to that, and I'm going to put a big old box at the top. All right. So I believe that the answer to this expression is 360. And we could multiply 360 times 15 to make sure that we got the right answer, couldn't we? 5 times 0, 5 times 6 is 30, 5 times 3 is 15, 16, 17, 18. And then this is really, get rid of that, 10 times 0 is going to be 0. 10 times 6 is going to be 6, and that's going to be 3. Oh, that does not look right. That does not look right at all. Let's see. 0 and 0, 0 and 0. That's 14. Oh, yeah, it is right. 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 5,400. Oh, it's getting the end of the day. So I know that this does equal. We checked our work. Good job, boys and girls. Let's meet again next time for lesson 13. Thank you.